In this video, we are going to measure torque on paramotors. Uh, honestly, I believe it's the first time ever someone actually measuring the torque on paramotors. No, we don't have a wind tunnel, but we have a very cool way how to measure it. Everything on an aircraft must have a reason. Ignore the status quo, imagine from scratch, and build what you can justify with science. Fail five times to succeed once. This is how we innovate paramotors, and for you, understanding the science behind will make you a smarter pilot. Torque is a pretty tricky thing that we face when we're flying paramotors, and it's actually derived from the third Newton's law, which says every action leads to the equal, just opposite reaction. So it's so simple. If we spin the prop to the left, there will be equal force spinning the paramotor and me inside the paramotor to the right. As a result, just paramotors tend to turn to the right. So single propeller airplanes face this as well, and it constantly has a tendency to turn to one side. Helicopters are an excellent example. If they didn't have the back rotor to compensate for torque, they would just start spinning. And with paramotoring, it's not only annoying that it this constant tendency to turn to one side, it's also dangerous if combined with the wrong setup and there are numerous cases out there where it actually torque led to some very dangerous accidents. In this video, we are not going to explain how and why we face torque, but we're gonna measure it. How much torque we are actually having, torque in Newton meters. If you wanna know more about this theory and the physics behind torque, we covered this in a different video. It's part of the paramotor geometry classroom where we explain the know-how of designing paramotors. Go and check it out. Now you may ask yourself, why would you need to measure the torque of the paramotor? And the truth is, you don't have to. As long as the manufacturer of your paramotor did his job right, you just go and fly it. Now is the time that we can reproduce the measurements I did 10 years ago because you're using aerodynamic torque compensation and I had to measure the torque when I did my aerodynamic calculations. And actually, I'm really curious to find out because I found some mistakes in the measurement back in those times that made the whole R&D process a lot longer, unnecessarily. And now I want to measure it again. At the end of the video, you will find out why my measurement 10 years ago was wrong. Just like Sir Isaac Newton, it all started with a tree. 10 years ago, when I did my measurements for my aerodynamic calculations, I just found the tree, suspended the paramotor from that tree, and put these kind of scales. And it basically shows now 66 on both. When I apply throttle, the torque will have a tendency to twist me to the right. So I will see weight increasing on this scale and decreasing on this scale. And the difference is actually the torque. Super simple. So for this make happen, we had to make some special arrangements. First of all, this is not a scout because it doesn't have any torque compensation. It's just plain tube. The bars are perfectly symmetric. There is no offset. So this is a paramotor that is absolutely useless. It's impossible to fly it. It has no torque compensation. So it will be really, really annoying and probably even dangerous to fly. And now we have this beautiful bridge. We can do the test experiment very safely. Actually, this experiment didn't work out very well. The reason was that when I applied thrust, I, I tried to hold it stable at 5,500, 6,500 and full throttle. But after a very short while, the whole thing started to swing left and right and I couldn't keep it stable. And uh, I'm sure it affects the reading on the scales. I was unable to read it. The next improvement what we will do is I need to stabilize the thing. So I will stretch my legs some, like this and have some support on my feet. So when I apply throttle, I will be stable, but I will not affect the torque because the torque is twisting me like this and I will only stabilize the forward motion.
Before we dig deep into the results, I, let me do some theoretical predictions. In one of our previous videos in the Paramodal Geometry classroom, I explained that the torque of the propeller is an aerodynamic function of the propeller. Prop, as any other wing, has lift and drag. The lift kind of translates into thrust and drag translates into torque. Now, the drag, thus the torque, is a square function of the speed of the wing slash propeller. That means the theory predicts that the torque will be a square function of the propeller speed, of the propeller RPM. So increasing the power on the engine should lead to dramatic increase of the torque. In the Paramodal Geometry classroom, I did this prediction that the torque is a square function of the engine RPM. And I'm really curious if the measurements that we did will actually correspond to these theoretical predictions. Let's have a look at the measured values. As you could notice, the numbers on the scales were kind of oscillating up and down because it wasn't perfectly stable. The reading on the scale on the left and the right at three different scenarios, 5,500 RPM, which stands for level flight in my case, 6,500, which stands for the accelerated flight, and uh, 8,450, which was the full throttle in, in our case. Average difference between the scales on the, on the left and right side for level flight was 4.5 kilos. It was 7.7, .7 while 6,500 RPM, and it was 14.4 kilograms at full throttle. This is in kilograms, it's simply difference between left and right. And we can translate this to Newton meters because I know that the distance between the bars is 380 millimeters on the scale. I have the average torque in Newton meters for level flight 8.5 Newton meters up to almost 27 Newton meters for full throttle. Now the most interesting part is to look at these numbers in a chart. We have the three dots, those are the numbers from the measurements. It's crazy how accurately it fits the square trend line. Unbelievable. So absolutely, the measurements have confirmed the theoretical predictions and the torque is a square function of propeller RPM. And uh, increasing the RPM of the prop twice will cause to increase the torque by four times. I'm curious to compare these numbers with my measurements eight years ago. Eight years ago, I suspended the paramotor on a tree to measure torque because I needed these values to choose the profile and design the dynamic torque compensation for the scale. That time I used the Nirvana Rodeo high suspension, so slightly different setup, different center of gravity and so on, but surprisingly the numbers were similar. So for level flight I measured 14 Newton meters, uh, which kind of sits in between the values that I have for level flight and accelerated flight uh, today. And uh, for maximum power I measured 29 Newton meters while these days I've measured 27. Again, very very close numbers so it fits. Now there is one thing I want to discuss when it comes to these measurements and that's the how accurate were these measurements. There is a reason to doubt these numbers slightly. And I will explain why. Let's go back to the result. Here I have three hidden columns and that's the basically sum of the reading on the left and right scale. And there was, there was something weird happening. So in the first test, the sum of the scale on left and right was 117.7 kilograms in total. But at 6,500, it was suddenly 119 kilograms. And when I applied full throttle, the total reading on both scales increased to 121. So what does it mean? It obviously means that when it was pushing me hard, I mean, I probably had 75 kilos of thrust on my back. I tried to be neutral with my legs and my feet leaning onto the car probably somehow the reading was affected. I don't find any other reason why my total weight should have increased. I don't think it matters that much. It's just one or two kilos out of 120 is one percent error. I think in general these tests were pretty accurate and they are, they're as accurate as they can be with given, given the tools. What's the conclusion of this experiment? Well, regardless how accurate 
these measurements were, we were still measuring static thrust. And I wonder how much the speed of flight will affect the performance of the propeller because the torque comes from the aerodynamic forces and laws of the propeller. But we were measuring static thrust and static torque. But when flying in the air with given airspeed, the angle, the effective angle of attack on the propeller will be different. And now, now, does it matter? I don't know. Would it matter if I fly with a beginner glider? Would it matter if I fly with a more advanced glider, with a big one or a heavy overloaded glider? I don't know. And actually, the only way to find out and make the measurements more accurate is to do the same test in the air. So I will do the same setup. We will next time we will go and fly it. And meanwhile, I would like to know your opinion. What are your expectations? How different the, the, the outcomes is going to be? Stay tuned. I'm, I'm really curious. I'm excited and um, I'm looking forward for the next video for sure. I hope you do too. Ciao.